yeah, I think it has been 12 overall. But yeah, it has been very, very weird to see Clubhouse be so attacker-sided recently. Uh, one thing I will point out is that when we saw Liquid playing, they pulled out some really weird strategies with the Twitch, but we are finally ready to get into the stream versus Team Empire. It's going to be their first map here on Clubhouse. Should be a very exciting matchup indeed. And I'm very interested to see what the map bands are here because if the map bands go the way, sorry, the operate bands go the way they think they are, then we should see a defender side of map and Team Empire should be able to take big advantage. Now, we did see Team Empire play Secret on this map and uh, they did very, very well there to completely tear apart Secret's attack. I wonder if the stream is actually good about the Ash here. They, they definitely could do. It's something that... Oh, they're going to have Panthers of Fear. That is a very interesting ban. I I like that it's an interesting ban. I'm not sure how useful it's going to be, though. I don't know how effective that is at all, really. I would I would, I would have expected the Ash ban just to really try and target um, Joystick. But yep. the Zephyr ban there just seems a little bit uh, out of the ordinary. So it is going to leave both the Heart Breaches available. Yeah, and then we see the Echo getting banned out by Illustream. Stream. This leaves Empire potentially probably going to be banning out the... If they have the Maestro available and the Zofia's banned, it's definitely going to give them a slight advantage here because, you know, you're going to be around to bring that soft destruction that Zofia's great at destroying those Maestro cams with. And there we go. The Mirror Ban is going to come through as predicted. So there are our bans. It's going to be Zofia, Maverick, Echo, and Mirror. Yeah, and we did see a little bit of uh, almost uncertainty yesterday when Mirror was actually let through the banning phase that it kind of gave players a bit too much available at the disposal and by choosing the mirror it was almost like some of the some of the defenses weren't quite working out as intended because obviously mirror does see quite a high ban rate indeed so moving on into the picks now and we can see already that Karzeka is going to be sixing off the vigil and uh, just changing over onto the dock there so a bit of a uh, you know from from one extreme to the other i guess from a pretty uh, pretty serious roaming operator in vigil to uh, a nice good anchor operator there on the dock for Car Zeka. They're going to be taking us up to CCTV and Cash for their first defensive round. So we can see that we've got going to have uh, Scyther there is going to be placing one of his evil eyes over in construction. I would uh, maybe anticipate the second one gets placed over somewhere near garage as well. As, uh, I mean, this is quite a typical hold that we've seen a couple of times. Now. I've watched Clubhouse, um, I think, on all of the evenings so far. It's been uh, it's certainly been one of the maps that's fallen, you know, quite a long way into into favour and into meta with these teams at the moment. Yeah, definitely, we have seen Clubhouse quite a bit recently, um, and this is a fairly standard lineup coming out from both teams here. You know, just having the double hard reach here, we talked about a bunch. It does put it into the favor of attackers a little bit, but if you play around the Maverick ban, you can put this quite heavily into your favor. So we'll see how Empire play around that. I think Empire going into this are definitely the favorites, and the stream are going to have their work cut out for them, but it's going to be very interesting to see how exactly it's going to work out. Yeah, I think, you know, the stream is certainly... I don't want to even use the word underdogs, but they're going to get a nice couple of points of damage there, and Uno is going to find the head of Joystick. That's a pretty big kill to just enter on in. Very unusual angle for Uno to be entering there down the dirt tunnel. It really isn't something that you would have expected, and uh, you can see there that he's not even really had to use a breach and charge to get that. That may even been a hole that the defenders have made up for a run out. I'm not sure at this point, but to get a nice little pick there downstairs in Arsenal and then just be able to rotate all the way back up and go and assist your team with the push, you can't argue with that in the first few seconds. Yeah, really good pick going out from that. And also, just to know that Uno is using the Invitational skin as well in his R4C. So, definitely very interesting coming out from him. But we're going to move into round number one. Don't forget, Uno did actually play at the Invitational last season, uh, last year, sorry, with uh, his team Ents. And that he was actually the newest in addition to that roster. So, we will see Renaborn getting underway, looking very, very, very good indeed for the stream already, as they'll pick Rise, sorry, they'll pick Shockwave. And a joystick already off the board, looking very, very good for them. But oh my god, Hicks just shuts down Karzeka before he can even peek anything out. And now looking very, very bad for Team Empire. So 5v2, well, the stream is all theirs right now. 
Empire have suffered a couple of big losses there, uh, especially Karzeka on Garage Catwalk. That's not something that you do want to be losing. Scyther is going to be getting ready to put some shots down onto the Book of Rise, but at this point, there's not enough defenders left to hold the site, and he's going to be uh, redeployed elsewhere, but it does allow him to avoid the grenade. The uh, grenades are going to be flying in. The drones are coming in as well. He's going to peek out the angle onto the east. Doesn't quite manage to land his shots to get him pinched from both sides. He picks up one kill, but Uno's going to trade him straight back out. Shepard now is the last man standing on the smoke. Does manage to get it down and is detonating some toxic bays. Will the plant be going down in this scenario? He's now going to be fully flashed as Uno is just trying to gather a bit of information. The plant has gone down. More stun grenades coming through for Shepard. He's in a very tough spot here. He's going to pick up the kill onto the down player of Uno. Three versus one now with the diffuser planted. He does pick up a second one onto Aces. He's making this a little bit easier for himself, picking these 1v1 engagements. Is he going to be able to find these last two kills? He's not really well equipped with his weaponry to do so. He might even just try and go for a long arm here, but that sound cue is almost certainly going to be heard by Hicks. Is Hicks going to be able to get this kill? He is. Hicks does take out Shepard. Great try from Shepard. I think there wasn't a lot else that he could have done in that situation other than just try to get the defuse. Because if he'd have exposed himself to the uh, east balcony, it would have been good night. So very close there, but a good opening round there for the stream. Amazing amount of early kills coming out from the stream as well. Already taking out Joystick that early gives them pretty much complete map control at that point. Kazeku was put in a really bad situation as well because the east wall got opened up really early and he was trying to refrag off of Joystick as well, and he was trying to stop the book from opening up stuff from below. I really think the early stream did everything perfectly there, including their post plan. It was amazing. The amount of flashes that came down completely delayed the retake, and that allowed them to reposition for a really good post plan situation, because if there's a smoke in a post plan, you don't want to be anywhere near him. As you said, he doesn't really have the weaponry to take long-range engagements. No, and if that had been if they'd have been close range engagements with that shotgun, we've already seen what that shotgun can do at close range, and it is an absolute beast. So yeah, like you say, the stun grenades there that were coming out, they probably bought the stream an extra 15 seconds, maybe a little bit longer, which was just enough time for them to get themselves out of harm's way. Empire, however, they're going to opt to go to the same location again. At this point, we've seen a lot of teams they do like to favour going to the same location twice before trying to change things up. There's certainly no harm in doing so, as I don't believe that Joystick dies that early every single round. It was a little bit of a... I guess it was good drone work from the side of Lestream, but I don't think that he's going to fall for the same mistake twice. Yeah, hopefully he's not. Hopefully he's not. And we'll see how Lestream take their second attack here. Empire not looking too good all of a sudden. This is very interesting from them. But as I said, with two hard breaches, this does tend to be a sack of sided, so I wouldn't really take too much away from the stream. Sorry, from Empire right now. We'll see exactly how this is going to get underway. Empire taking pretty much the exact same roster here, and so will the stream. Like we said, there's not really been anything that's uh, you know gone too heavily wrong on either side, so there's no real need to change things up all too much. Um, I think maybe one of the only additions you could make if you were on the side of Empire would be a Legion. Um, Legion always a, an operator that's very handy to have, especially when uh, we're going to have the Book of Rise just going to be harassing from underneath. Uno's going to be so close to getting a kill, but Joystick does manage to flick and find his head, getting traded straight out though by Al Farmer. So. He's made his way all the way through into construction now, and he's holding a pretty aggressive angle. I'm not sure if Joystick knew that he was there. It seemed as though Joystick was going to get pinched either way there, and it's pretty fortunate he did manage to find a kill, uh, you know, before uh, before they found him. The push is going to come through the construction area, and, uh, and sorry, the bedroom side, with uh, with Rise able to open up uh, quite a bit of uh, a bit of the wall there, but just really struggling to deal with this Maestro, and that's why it can be so difficult to use frag grenades on Maestro cameras. He also actually missed the second nade as well, and if uh, if the Maestro camera just not shot anything, he would just waste a few nades for basically no point. But halfway into the round now, we are going to see the stream just make their push onto the site itself. This is actually not looking that great for them because they've already lost Ash, and while Ash or Jaeger is a bit of a one-for-one -one trade, Empire are looking in a much better position than they were last time. They still have these East Wall closed. They still have a lot of control where they didn't previously, but you know, Ryze is going to make short work of that. I love when people play Book down here, and it happens so rarely. 
it just allows you such an angle into the site. You can really open things up. You can see there he's working off information, he's working off pings, he's forcing the players on Empire to move around in the site, which will ascent, which will in turn force them into crossfires that have already been established by the stream upstairs. And it just makes downstairs to be a very uncomfortable place for the defenders to be. But like you say, Empire are doing the right thing. They're just holding holding strong at the moment. They don't have to peak all too much. The time is running down in their favour. And the stream are running out of time and utility in terms of you know, trying to get anything open here to try and execute this push in the final 30 seconds. And the final 30 seconds, we will go down. Flashes are going to come through. Alphamer makes the first entry there. But Saito works back. Shepard gets a kill as well. And it's a 2v3, but there we go. All the kills just come through in a flurry from Empire. And they take round number two. And a disaster of an attack coming out from the stream, completely different to what we just saw from them. Just the polar opposite of the first round, like you say there. Uh, Empire just doing everything they needed to do. I think a key a key a factor in that was Joystick played a little bit more conservatively. He wasn't downstairs in Arsenal. He wasn't down in blue. He was upstairs in bedroom. He got traded out straight away, but it was a big kill that he got onto Ash. It removed the ability to deal with the evil eye cameras quickly. We lost the nades off the book in trying to deal with the evil eye cameras, which would have been really handy to maybe push the bandit off the east wall. And it's, it's small little details like that that can really shape the, uh, the, the way that a round plays out. Yeah, that's a good point to make as well, that when there's no Zofia on the table, the Ash all of a sudden becomes insanely important when there's a Maestro available to Team Empire. And yeah, that you saw how Book was really struggling to get that Maestro cam out of construction. And it just shows that nades is not an easy way to get rid of Maestro cams normally. But we're going to move through into round number three. Team Empire are going to go downstairs to the Arsenal room and church defense. What do you think of this defense normally? I quite like this defense. We've talked about it multiple times in that it's very important the defenders bring enough impact grenades to be able to keep hatches closed. Um, impact tricking is something that has just become, become invaluable if you're trying to keep control of kitchen hatch. If you can keep control of that hatch and, and even better, waste the attacker's utility on opening it in terms of the ex Kairos and the exothermic charges. It can really make your job as a defender a lot easier uh, in the in the later stage of the round because it does tend to be a little bit of a bloodbath in the dying seconds. Um, the, this objective that's what we usually tend to see on on club. Yeah, it definitely tends to be. We also don't tend to see too much of heavy roam, which is why the vigil was six picked from Karzeka there onto the pulse, which is good. And uh, yeah, like the pulse is great here as well. And also the stream have not been taking IQ so far, so. Yeah, I think that's a really good pick coming out there from Empire. And they should be able to hold on to Kitchen as he goes. But Joystick getting very aggressive here on Secret. This is what he can do, but so far, not getting any kills for his time. But the Master Cam is going to cover his retreat. Blue Hatch is going to get opened up there. Aces, though. Blue Hatch is, uh, is something that, you know, that's pretty standard to get open. You don't really leave yourself much option, but Karzeka is going to come out with that early Nitro kill onto Rise, removing Buck, and that's going to make keeping hold of Kitchen Hatch a heck of a lot easier for the defenders. They're not going to get getting so much pressure. You can see that Ash is now having to use those really precious Ash rounds on the floor, and they're going to want to be saved for Maestro cams later on. So again, it's this Buck and Ash sort of combination where, which the Maestro can just cause so much devastation to the utility that those two operators possess. You can see now the players of Empire are tucking themselves away in the northeast corner of the site. They don't need to expose themselves. They're just going to be getting ready with impacts in hand to trick the hatch to deny that entry for the attackers. Yeah, and you make a good point there as well that Empire have been giving themselves lots of breathing room by getting an early pick or a very early important pick and denying utility and they're just hiding because you don't need to peek at that point. You could just waste time and the stream have to make the attack for themselves. This is not looking good for the stream because Attackers they don't really seem to know where exactly they want to take the push from. And I can't really blame them at this point because losing the book that early is not good, but that is very good. Uno does get the entry kill there onto Shockwave. Very good from him. Ash charges will go down as well. And they're looking very, very good for a church take here all of a sudden. Yeah, losing the impacts there on Shockwave. How many times do we see a Legion dying that's just trying to get that Legion man in a slightly better situation? It is unfortunate Bomb that, uh, well, unfortunate for him that Uno was able to find his head. You can see now Uno just gathering some last-second information as we go into the final 30 seconds as the push is certainly going to have to come out. 
Alpha Mount there going to pick up the kill onto Scyther as Uno is very aware that someone's going to be playing in the dirt tunnel and he does find the head of Shepard all of a sudden looking very good for the stream. Second kill is going to come through all down to Joystick now. He's picked up his first kill. The Diffuser is in the hands and it is going to be going down any second now. Joystick on a roam just trying to get through to Church. Aces is going to be covering the flank and pick up that final kill. Another round on the board for the stream. A great attempt from Team Empire coming out, a very really early advantage for them. But honestly, I think a lot of this match is going to be Uno versus Joystick. It's going to be whoever gets that entry first is uh, is going to win the round. It, it definitely could be. I mean, you say that, but Empire got a, got, the, got the first blood that round onto uh, onto the book. So, onto Rise. It, I, I understand what you're saying, but I mean, the way that Uno was allowed to just walk into sight there, pick up the head of the Legion pick up the head of the dirt, guy in the dirt tunnel and just sort of progress on, it does sort of make him a, quite a force to be reckoned with at that point if he's able to just to do that on an Ash with, you know, if that was a Monty that was doing that with someone backing him up, you could maybe understand it a little bit more, but he kind of just walked into the side for free there. Yeah, he did Ash main his way in there. We are going to see round number four getting underway. Team Empire going to go again down to the Arsenal room and church defense. I will say again that, you know, two hard reaches does mean, in my opinion, this is going to be fairly attacker sided, so... I think it's going to be all down to Empire to see how many defenses they can win in this first half, but at the moment it's not really looking good for them. The stream have been really good at kind of adapting their attack and playing very well around Uno. Losing that book so early on could potentially lose you the round right there and then because you really just lost a huge amount of utility. And as you said, Magic Camp has become that much harder to deal with, but not only that, now Empire know you have to go for a church take. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and yeah, and like you say, going for the church take, it can be a little bit more difficult, purely because you've got to really commit yourself as the Thermite to be able to get that wall open, because it is more typically the Thermite that is going to use uh, only one of the charges to open that wall, as opposed to Invana, where we'd have to use three, and then that removes some hatch capability as well. I think if you're able to get Kitchen Hatch open for only one or two X Kairos, you're probably in a pretty good position to be able to then push on to that church wall as well. We have seen that it's very important you've got sort of a, a double-pronged attack. And the attack rounds that we've seen historically that have worked really well on Clubhouse, they've always incorporated a little bit of control of blue, which the guy from blue does tend to wait until some control of tunnel is gained. The, the hatch and they all kind of make it very difficult for the defenders to operate in the site i'd maybe like to see the stream take advantage of the blue stairs area now just to provide a little bit more pressure yeah you are right like taking blue can be a pretty important part of this but it does tend to be more about if you're going to go for an arsenal take than about a church take but you know, you know cutting off that road take can do you no harm at all we'll see how round before gets underway as we see empire again holding down arsenal room and again, with pretty much the exact same lineup, and Empire and the stream both haven't really been changing anything about their lineups. Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I think if it, it doesn't, you know, if it's not broke, don't try and fix it. Ooh, Ace is going to find the head of Karzeka there. He's even got the heartbeat scanner in his hand, and he's just thrown a C4 and missed. He should have realized that there was going to be a player somewhere else. Shock there, managing to pick up the head of Aces against all odds. Working upwards on those angles is never easy. So that's a really big kill to take out the Hibana, especially after just losing the pulse. It's going to deny a lot of hard walls to be opened by the team of the stream, and you can see now the push is going to start to come as uh, as they just claim more off blue to make sure they're not going to get flanked at any sort of late stage. Moto hatch there is going to be open, which is going to be one of their options. But now it's going to be down to Hicks to use his last exothermic on the kitchen hatch. If this gets impact tricked, it's going to make it very difficult for the stream. It won't, but he will manage to get that open. So this is all looking very, very good for the stream. Flashbangs are going to come through Moto, but 45 seconds left to go on the clock. The stream are starting to run out of time. We've seen some last pushes coming out from them before, but purely off of the back of Uno's entry frag ability. Let's see how he's going to progress here. And his flashbangs further are going to come down. It's like Moto drops are going to come down as well. Smokes go out from Shepard, and he's trying to desperately deny all of this. Ryan's going to try and hold down this grenade as he pushes into Balloon and should be able to take out this Magic Camp. Easy as that. Opens it up and goes for the pre-fires. He's going to drop all the way down. Ryan's trying to get in, and then when he does take down Joystick, and that's a 4v3. That's exactly the entry they just needed. Scyther will refrag. Now it's a 3v3. Shockwave holding down onto Dirt. We'll push out Scyther and picks up another. There goes Alphama. It's all 2v3. It's all down to Hicks and Uno. The Diffuser will go down in the back of Arsenal. But Shockwave with a great kill onto Hicks. We'll try and get another one. Get instantly traded out by Uno. It's all down to him in a 1v2 post plan. He has the plan down and he has the kills. He gets another one to Shepard. And Uno with a 3k to finish it off. Oh my god. The stream take round number four. But the skin of their teeth and just off the back 
cover you know. Oh my god. I really enjoy how you said this is all going to come down to you know at the start of that round, and then I told it picks you. up a really nice finishing clutch in a post-plant situation where it really looked as though Empire should have just picked up that last kill, got the defuse, you know, another round on the board for them. But no, you know, they saying, call him they call him the Uno Meister for a reason. The Uno Meister is uh, no, he's done a great job there to pick up that round. It's it's a, an important point as well, and it's showing that, you know, Clubhouse is this evening again running a little bit in the favour of the attackers. Empire did a great job round number two to pick up CCTV. That's where we're going to be going back to now. And they've got to be feeling okay about themselves. I'm sure that they're not letting this get to the heads all too much because they surely Defenders were expecting this coming into this map. Pretty sure I know who's feeling pretty good about themselves right now. That's Una. Maybe the guy that's on seven and two, eh? Seven and two are only into round number five, and I'm already jumping out of my seat in the first map of the best of three, or the first best of three that we've had. Should be some exciting matches coming down, some more exciting rounds. Don't forget, Clubhouse was Empire's pick here as well, and them being down three one already is not looking great for them. No, and it shows good, um, you know, good on the fly adaptation from uh, the team of Lestream, purely because you can never really prepare for an attack in the same way that you can prepare for a defense. Your attacking rounds are often almost pre-decided for you with, in terms of how the defense sets up. You've yeah. kind of got to play into that a little bit more. There's things that you can do, certainly, but you're kind of limited by how the defense set up. So if this is Empire's pick and they're setting the site up in the way that they want, it could make it difficult for them when they come onto the attack as uh, you know, as they're going to have to deal with the way that Lestream is setting the site up. But like we've said, Clubhouse, maybe a little bit attacker favored currently, especially with these uh, operator bands. If you're starting Empire now, are you wondering, should we maybe abandon another hard breach? Because the stream have consistently brought two. Yeah, no, that is very, very true. I think that we were kind of expected to see the hard breach band coming through. Maybe we see Clubhouse in our next matchup when Vitality play later this evening. Hopefully, we will see another hard breach band. But as, as I said before, if you're going into this and you're thinking you're not having the strategic advantage, I feel like you need to do something weird. But I think the stream. They, they did something weird by banning the Zofia, and I think that's actually going to affect Empire's attack quite a lot. Because while we did see it on that particular attack, it wasn't doing well for them, they were wasting a lot of utility taking out the Maestro cams. I, I think Empire's going to suffer a lot more for it. Because Lestream have managed to find three rounds, mostly off the back of you know, just pushing in and getting kills. But also they've been able to deal with the Maestro cams pretty effectively, regardless of that. Yeah, I mean, there's been a couple of occasions where we've maybe seen a couple of grenades that have uh, that have missed the mark for the for the evil eyes. But like you say, the Zephyr does provide good utility, and something that's quite often overlooked on the Zephyr is the concussive lifelines. They're so good for being able to tell if someone's just hiding around a corner in the site. Hicks is actually going to be down. He has opened the east wall. Uh, but the Diffuser is going to be down at his feet, and I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get revived here. I'm sure that uh, there's a team member of, uh, of Empire waiting to try and bait this kill out, as Ryze isn't really wanting to go for that revive just yet. It's probably going to be down to Aces to ensure that gets picked up, and you can see there that Shock is going to peek out and pick the kill up onto the book. I'm not sure if that's a very worthwhile sacrifice at that point. Thermite's already done his job in opening the wall, and I think there's a lot more value left in the book in the final minute to open up the floor. There is, but I don't think the book expected this guy to just wide peek out as soon as that drop came down from Aces, but he did, and he got the kill. Very well played indeed. They need the Thermite back if they want to do for a construction push instead. So I don't mind them trying to revive the Thermite, but yeah, the book going down that early, that's not great. Joystick still going to be on the roam down here, and Balloon is going to get punished by an Alpha that picks him up for free. But Shockwave finds yet another Uno Meister himself is going to be eliminated. And that's the Fuser down outside. Alpha Mate will recover it, however, this is not looking too good all of a sudden for the stream. It's a three versus four. Empire looking very, very good to hold on to all of this at the moment, but they do have their entry to the stream do put flashbangs into the top of garage and trying to make their way in. Aces gets the entry kill there that they needed. Karzek is out of it. And now it's the 3v3. But the stream are in a very dangerous and precarious position right now. We'll try and push all the way in. Shockwave still holding down the flank and still holding down the push. The diffuser will start going down behind Server X. Oh, Shockwave just gets all the way in. He gets down the diffuser as well. So 1v3 and Shockwave with a 4k shuts all down the stream. And that's Team Empire who take round number 5. Pretty much off of the back of Shockwave. We've seen some great individual plays already today, and Shockwave is no surprise to be one of those doing it. 
I really love that vault from from Cash into CCTV there that he did. It just allowed him so much. There was no exposure that it gave up because it was opening quite a high level of the wall. So there wasn't really much exposure. It's great for throwing smoke grenades over or C4s. But to be able to jump over there and manage to get the planter and then just move on into the guy in garage, he'll have known at that point that he got the diffuser down because he saw yeah. it, but he, you could tell he was just hungry for blood. He wanted to get some more kills on the board. The, and, yeah, the big thing about that vault as well is he vaulted as someone else pushed out the door. So either way, he's going to die a plant. And the big thing about vaulting in general is it just kind of throw you forward a little bit further. So he's really not that far away from it that if he's going down in realistic time terms. But Karzeka, again with a six pick from the Vigil onto Attackers the pulse. As we'll see another downstairs defense coming up from Empire. Now, this was a very, very close round. We saw this last defense. Empire almost took back the retake with a 3v1. But it's all, it was all down to the Uno Meister. And I honestly still think a lot of these rounds are coming down to whether Uno is alive or not right at the last second. Well, we could see last time that Uno was... Um, Uno was taken out at around the halfway point of the round, I yep. believe. Uh, and it did influence the way that the round played out in the end because he wasn't there to be able to pick up the kills in the final yeah. few seconds. He wasn't there to be able to establish a bit of a crossfire. Yeah, because don't forget, I think if Lestream had had somebody playing on the east balcony where the east wall had been opened, it would have been a lot more difficult for Shock to make yeah. that rotation and kill the planter at that point. It definitely would have been. I also want to point out that the only other round then that Empire won was when Uno was the opening death to Joystick in the bedroom. So, I mean, I don't want to say it, but it is awfully seeming like Uno is a big key critical component to Lestream's attack. Uno OP at this stage, maybe? Potentially, <laughs> potentially, potentially. But we will move through into Lestream's final attack here on Clubhouse. Things looking pretty even across the board, however, and Empire looking to find their third round on defense. If they tie things up three apiece, it should go pretty well for them into the advantage. As I said, this is kind of attack aside if there's two hard reaches. It is very hard to tell though, because uh, we see some pretty back and forth rounds so far. Oh my God. Uno just gets all the way down there. Kazeka is gonna be caught with his pants down and Uno Meister himself will get the opening kill of the round. Team Empire already losing their Nitro and their Pulse info. That's huge. I can't believe there's not a Legion mine on the stairs. And now Legion's going to lose his life as well. Uno just walking in and picking up kills for free. Joystick going to stem the flow and get a kill onto Alfama. And that is going to take out the Capital. That's going to allow him to rotate back down into blue and get onto the site where he is so desperately needed at this point. As Uno's just been able to wreak havoc from the bottom of main stairs, he's still able to hold the angle. B site is entirely clear at this point, and then we've only got defenders over in A. If Uno holds that for another few seconds, he's got a good chance of picking up another player as well. But he's going to rotate off it and just make sure that uh, he, he can't, you know, maybe pick up a kill from the hatch. This is great game sense from Uno at this point. I'm sure that he's got people thrown in for him. If he looks a little bit to the left, he might pick that kill up, but I'm not sure if he is going to. Rise there comes out with a really nice grenade kill onto Shepard. Uno is desperately, desperately searching for that kill, but Joystick is going to find Uno before Uno finds Joystick three versus two in these final few seconds. Two versus two as Joystick picks up another. Joystick's not making, uh, he's not making any mistakes now. He's not taking any prisoners. He definitely wants to pick up this round. We've got Scyther watching the Moto door as Rise is just on the other side of that, waiting for the push to come down in the final 50 seconds. And yeah, the final 50 seconds ellipsing right now as Rise will try and make his way in. Hicks, they've really got to try and push dirt. Sorry, they're going to really good push trying to push Church or into Arsenal. But Joystick will shut all of that down with his third kill of the round. Hicks will go down, and now it's all down to Rise in a 1v2 situation. 30 seconds left to go on the clock. It's not looking too good for Rise. He doesn't have any frag grenades. He does have control of the diffuser. Goes round, desperately trying to find his entry. But Rise will take so many hits right now, and the pre fires will start to come through. Joystick still holding down onto Arsenal very, very well indeed. And Rise just has absolutely no entry. He has no time, and he has no options. He reload. He'll try and take a breath. He'll try and push through, but he misses the cross. Oh no! This is not looking good for him at all. And we'll still see Cypher holding down to church. He holds down the cross. Rise will take the one on one, but he can't find the kill. Cypher will take him down successfully. Team Empire find round number six and will even things up at three apiece. As Team Empire, you've got to be really happy with that first round or first phase, should I say, to be able to come out of Clubhouse at three apiece. It, uh, it it shows that they've done very well there. I think that could have really been a long way further in the, in Lestream's favour with them starting out on attack and the utility that, ha that they have at their disposal from doing so. Um, so I think you've got to be very pleased as Empire there with that result. I think as well that Empire are going to be pretty pleased, that, especially Joystick, because they're going on to the attack. I think this could be the first time we've seen Joystick on the Ash in a long time. 
Yeah, he's, he's kind of been forced over onto the Jackal in uh, in recent weeks, hasn't he? A lot of target bans coming out for Joystick on the Ash, but it seems as though the stream... Well, I guess Uno probably wanted Ash as much as Joystick did at that stage because he had a great showing with him in that first phase. Yeah, and I think that's why the Zofia ban came through because they didn't want to put Uno on the Zofia when he's had such a great entry ability on the Ash. We've already seen that go through, but now it's Joystick's turn. Now it's Joystick's turn to play around with the Ash. He's had a great performance as Jaeger already as well. Let's see how it goes down as we move into round number seven. With the first attack round coming out from Team Empire, the Russians. Let's see how they do with it. I'm going to see a slightly different bomb site, not one that we've seen before uh, during the qualifiers that we've casted from here. We're going to see Bar. It's, uh, I quite like this. It's not something that we've seen. We've kind of asked for it a couple of times. After the rework, there's, there's arguments either way as to whether it is more or less viable than previously. What do you think about this? I don't think this is great, honestly. Um, I know that it's different, and I kind of do like to see different things. My only problem with this site is there's not really a lot of cover, so a lot of it's going to come down to gunfighting. And I feel like Empire have a slight advantage here. If Uno isn't on the board, that is. But Uno's actually going to be playing on the castle here, kind of surprisingly. Although, actually, not that surprising, because he has been playing the castle a decent amount recently. I think maybe he really just likes the UMP, and that's why he'll take the castle up. I think the UMP is a great gun, and you know, if you've got the ability and the gun skill that uh, that Uno has, then you know, any gun's going to be a good one. But uh, yeah, the UMP can be very accurate. It's uh, it's interesting that they've chosen to go down to go, go down to Bar, sorry, um, and Empire Glass is available, but maybe not. Uh, you know, Empire maybe not expecting this bomb site pick coming out here from the stream. That's interesting. That you mentioned the Glass is available because we haven't seen the Glass yet at all in any of the qualifier games, and this is the first time we've seen him not get banned. So, this is definitely very interesting as we move through into round number seven. Empire holding on very well indeed. It's like Joystick is just gonna try and watch for any kind of run out that he can. I think he really wants to make his entry and he's waiting for people to start to drone him in. And there we go, he will make his entry, but he knows there's someone up in the top of the garage who go for the pre-fires, but Aces will be holding on just as easily. He'll try and peek it out. This is a really dangerous battle for Joystick to try and take. Oh, he'll whiff the flashbang, that's not good. What he needs is the Capital from Shepard to rotate and take Aces out. Look at how much time Aces is able to waste there. Even if the flashbang had got there, Aces has got one of his ADSs right at his feet. So that's going to cause him, you know, a little bit of a safe area to be able to operate in. You know, Joystick there waiting for a bit of drone information, waiting for, to make the push. I think the push has got to come from somewhere else at that point, or they've got to deploy more bodies to be able to deal with Aces on that catwalk. I'm not sure what Shockwave was doing there, but I think he was having a bit of issues on his repel. It's kind of hard. It's kind of dangerous as well. Because you've got to just throw that repel up there and just hope it clinks onto something, but we'll see Shockwave getting all the way up here. Looks like he will be opening up construction here as well, and we'll see how exactly that's going to go down. Joystick has made his way all the way through into the basement right now. This could be a really good opportunity for him. It's going to be Karzeka, however, who does get the opening kill of the round. Uno Meister already off the board. That is a really good opening kill as well, considering position-wise where it just happened. Yeah, especially with the form that Uno's been showing this map so far, uh, certainly a good idea to try and target one of the uh, one of the guys that's you know going off in terms of kills at the moment. But a very slow push here from Empire. I mean, we're moving into the final 35 seconds or so of the round. They've not really gained all too much control of, uh, of upstairs. I'm not sure if maybe that Ash charge perhaps missed onto the Maestro or if it did actually manage to detonate it anyway, but Joystick's made his way into the bar, so this is what you were talking about, about it being very open once you uh, once you actually get into the site. And he's going to be looking for any kills that he can, but there's a very good cross being developed by the members of the stream. Joystick's going to pick up that kill. I'm not sure how he didn't fall down the hatch. He's going to go for a second as well, and he manages to get that one. Alpha Man there, the last man standing. One versus four. Shots are going to come through from Scyther, and it's going to be enough. Team Empire are going to win their first attacking round. And as I said, I really think that that's a good site to take if you're against maybe a team that's a little bit too organized, if you know what I mean, that they're relying a little bit too much on strategy. They potentially just don't really dry run that area. And I remember Tune Squad, which is you know Talon's new team, I talked about that a little bit during the NA qualifiers, that, uh, yeah, that they just... They go there and it completely throws off teams because no one has any idea to take it. But Empire, they were seeming a little bit at the start there that they didn't really know what to do. But then Joystick just said, you know what? I'm just going to go below. I'm just going to go into the site. I'm just going to kill people. And that's exactly what he did. It's the stamp of a good team that's able to 
you know, they had a very slow start to the round and we were sort of watching Joystick there waiting outside of Garage and then uh, we had Thermite just wondering where he was going to go up and to repel. But during that time, there is very key, crucial comms going on on the side of Empire and they're figuring out how they're going to make that take. And, and that's where time management really comes into it. They're, they know and they understand that they need to use the time early round to give them enough time to execute, figure out the problems, understand how they're going to push this and leave themselves enough time to either A, just kill everybody, or get the diffuser down and defend a post-plant situation. That's the stamp of a good team. Yeah, uh, actually a very interesting thing about this game is that if you kill all five members of your team, you actually win the round. Exactly. You can still worry going through that. So, we're going to get through into round number eight. It's going to be Team Empire on their second attack round, having taken the first one very successfully. The stream are going to choose to go downstairs to the Arsenal, which is kind of surprising they go down here as their, their second site, considering that Maverick is actually banned here. Maybe we would have seen a CCTV defense. It went the way of uh, sorry. It went the way of Empire more often than it went the way of the stream during the first phase. Uh, but then again, I think Arsenal can maybe be a little bit more. I don't know. It's, it's kind of easier to hold, isn't it? You can kind of all just play on site. You've not really got to worry about angles like the garage, and it really forces the attackers to you know take good control of the site. You can see that even just little things like Joystick having to just drone himself in ever so slightly to that doorway. They're the kind of precautions that Empire are taking right now. He's got the drone of shock there working ahead of him just to make sure that Bart is going to be clear. Very organized coming out now from Empire on this round. I feel like just both of these teams have a really similar playing style. Just uh, looking at how Joystick is entering the building, Uno was doing the exact same thing and how he's getting into the site quickly. Uno was doing the same thing on Ash. So I think that both teams are playing around their main fraggers quite heavily. And as I said, you know, I, I really do feel like it's going to come down to who has the better performance here. Is it going to be Joystick or is it going to be Uno? There's a lot to be said for individual performance, but it isn't the be-all and end-all. Teamwork will always prevail through in the end, as uh, as teams can, you know, use the guys to, to make pushes, to be able to, uh, you know, execute and pincer on one particular guy and target somebody if necessary. So I do understand what you're saying, Joystick there, just narrowly missing out on the kill onto Rise down in, uh, in the bottom of Blue Stairs there. But again, a very slow round from Empire. They've taken over good control, but they're really not rushing anything at this halfway point now. They know that they've got the as much map control as they need at this point, and they're just going to work their way down onto site. Uno Meister surely going to be looking for some sort of a C4 kill there. He's going to toss. I think that could have been a good one. It does. Karzek is going to fall to the C4 there. Uno with a very good sense of where Karzek was going to run. Gave that... Uh, gave that natural cell a little bit of lead there and uh, managed to pick up another one onto Joystick. Two very big kills there coming out from Uno. Two huge kills indeed coming out from Uno there. Really fragging out and Joystick going to go down so early on. It's now a 5v3. Empire a little bit stuck right now. We're going to wait for drones to start to come out here from Shepard. Shockwave still holding down the cross where he can. 45 seconds left to go on the clock. They don't really have their entry just yet. There we go. MPs will start to come down. They're going to try and get open church wall. Shockwave, you need to get open that church wall. Please don't peek this. This is not what you need to do right now, Shockwave. Everybody will peek it out when you get the kill anyway. Aces goes down. Empire looking a little bit better now to try and give themselves their entry. He needs to get into this fight, though. I think Alpha is actually trying to bandit trick this. So that is understandable. Shockwave not playing this too aggressively, but if he goes down, they're going to lose the round. They need to wait for Shepard to come through and try and put down some push, but no, Shockwave going to come and take down. He's going to go down, and Shepard going to try and put down some association bolts, but it's going to be Hicks and Alpha pick up kills. Shepard moves all the way through, but can't find the kill. Uno takes him down, and the stream and take round number eight. Very well done from them, especially that Nitro. I think that Nitro will win the round, honestly. Yeah, to be able to remove Hibana at that stage. If Hibana had been available in those final few seconds, there would have been no way that Bandit could have Bandit tricked a triple wall like that with two hard breaches available. Um, it would have been very easy for the attackers there to open up the wall um, and move on into church and do what they needed to do. And it really just forced them to play for picks. Lestream did a great job of not exposing themselves too much and they were able to hang back in the site. And at that point, as the defender... You know, when the smoke's cut, start to come through from the capital and the return smoke's come from your own smoke, it, it becomes a point where you've got to leave it as late as you can to make that push because you really want to try and catch the attackers planting the diffuser in those final few seconds when it's too late for them to maybe come off it. And I think that by the kill, from the kills that Lestream were able to get earlier on, it enabled Empire to just basically run out of time in those dying few seconds. The Uno Meister himself. 
12 and 5 right now. Doing very, very well for his team. Blue Stream looking pretty good right now with a nice downstairs defense. And I think the bar stock is just a little bit experimental from them. But uh, now the they've gone to the a much more particular site. They're going to look much better. But we're going to see a gym bedroom defense coming out from them now. We'll see how the stream take this. We haven't actually seen this defense yet. No, we've not, and I'm not sure why the stream are avoiding CCTV Attackers at this stage. The Maybe they just don't like watching TV. <laughs> this is, but this is the third defensive round, and that's arguably one of the top big sides. Especially with the Maverick off the board. I, I agree, it doesn't make, make that much sense, but the other thing you've got to consider is if it's the most picked site, that means it's also the most attacked site, and a lot of teams will concentrate a lot of their strategy around what they consider to be the hardest site to attack. It's a very good point, and um, you know I think we definitely saw it with Empire. You know they really weren't expecting to go down to Bar uh, for their first defense, or for their first attacking round. Sorry, with uh, with the stream's first defense. So see control is being taken there of Garage Joystick getting pretty comfortable in there. See the Ash Charge just taking out the Evil Eye with these Uno Meister is lying in wait though, just waiting on the window in CCTV. Be very close to getting that kill. Just it's such a narrow angle to try and use that. And I'm sure that Joystick is going to be very much aware that there's somebody playing on those stairs now. And he's not really going to want to make that jump and risk losing his life so early on into the round. Yeah, Joystick has actually already taken a couple of hits from this really particular angle coming out from Uno. We'll see how that is going to work out for him. Just about a minute into the round now. So just Joystick trying to make his way through onto the CCTV room and not find the kill. Oh my god. Great spray control coming out from Hicks there. We'll take him down, but not out just yet. No, Joystick could uh, could certainly be revived there, but look at all the time that this is wasting for Empire. Manages to crawl himself back onto the garage catwalk, get put back up onto 50 health. But look, we're halfway through the round, and there's no ground really being gained by Empire that they didn't gain in the first couple of seconds of the round anyway. Uh, Lestream are doing a fantastic job of just keeping Empire at bay, and it's going to force Joystick to have to rotate and try his luck on cash stairs. Yeah, and he's going to rotate out indeed. Joystick going to try and push up onto the stairs instead. But as you say, so much time already wasted coming out here from Empire. But oh my god, what a shot from Joystick. He takes Rise off the table immediately. He just got deleted. And now we see the stream just holding on barely now onto the cash room. But they still have control of things that are off the site. Shockwave goes down as he tries to push up. So that's the Thermite off the board. Team Empire looking a little bit bad now as we move into the last 50 seconds. The stream still holding on pretty strong now and they still have Uno on the Legion as Kazeka tries to crawl all the way around. This is not a great angle to take and there we go. Hicks is going to punish him for it but not take him down just yet. Kazeka still alive but not out just yet. Flashbangs are going to come through. Kazeka should be able to push up. It's going to be Uno which shuts down Joystick. Scyther does refrag, however. Uno goes down and Hicks goes down as well right in return. Alphabet trying to save him here with a crossfire, but Scyther does take down Hicks. And now it's a 2v3, looking much, much better for Empire. But 20 seconds left to go on the clock. Alphabet tries to push through onto the construction. And oh, he caught someone out. And there goes Kyle Zachary as he tries to push a Legion Mine out of his foot. And it was a 2v2. Alphabet still holding down where he can. The 11 hit Castle Barricade looking pretty good for him. But Shepard knows this is 11 hit. And there we go. Aces will be picked up by Scyther. And it's all down to a 1v1. No! Scyther takes down Alpha Man. Empire take round number nine. Insanely well done coming out from Empire all of a sudden. Scyther just moving in here and just doing damage every way he can. Scyther goes huge at the end. Really good to see. I thought with how much time the stream managed to eat in CCTV and cash. That, that was it was really looking good for them for the majority of that round it was only in the final few seconds there that uh, you know the tide started to shift in the favor of empire but i mean fantastic job by hicks on the maestro and just great patience that he showed in, uh, in not really exposing himself too much and the lesion you know the goo mines there coming in clutch as well i think a lot of that came down to the fact that joystick got his insanely good entry fight coming out from to rise who was holding down a great crossfire and because he got that kill allowed the rest of them to try and push in and get control of cash because after we saw that go down that Defender, gave them the space that they need to start attackers. pushing in and getting the frags even though they lost their thermite fairly early on and you kind of think that's game over then you can't win that now because we've talked about how clubhouse is attacker sided but only when there's two hard reaches up you're losing a hard reacher without utility going down it's kind of it's kind of game over but they just came back so well from that. I think their time management was really good. Their positioning was really good. But most importantly, their ability to trade off each other and set up the angles that they need and have the intel. Because the stream, while they were doing very well to hold down and chop up the time, they were not changing positions. 
they, they got themselves into a position where it would have been difficult to change though because you know empire did a Despite the fact that they, you know, spent quite a lot of time, they did do a very good job of setting themselves up for the push in the final few seconds, and it was well executed when it did come. And just with the way that the stream were trying to hold, they didn't have all too much of a presence downstairs. Which, if they did, it would have maybe been a little bit easier, and they would have possibly even had a gunfight down there as well um, with Joystick when he was trying to rotate up Cash. So there was there was a little bit of, you know, maybe a little bit too hunkered down there from the stream. Just a little bit too hunkered down, it would seem, as Joystick is going to use both of his breaching rounds very, very early on. So that's going to mean if there were Maestro cams up, it would have been much harder to deal with, but the stream isn't taking them. No, I mean, it's going to remove a little bit of ability to deal with any castle barricades as well, which um, is something that you definitely want to be using your Ash breaching rounds on. You know, Hatch can be uh, can be got by a breaching round or, you know, some, a breaching charge or something like that anyway. So... It'd be useful to keep them in the back pocket, but sometimes speed is important as well, and it will allow them to take over good control of bedroom side logistics. Joystick's just making sure that no one's going to be playing it down on the uh, in the bar area and just setting up a nice flank watch drone to make sure that they don't uh, they don't suffer from any sort of a flank later on in the round. Yeah, definitely doing very well with that indeed in the stream. Have finally gone to CCTV. So we are seeing Capital Bolts coming out, but that has not discouraged Aces at all to try and bandit trick this. And he will successfully get it off. Another Capital Bolt comes down. And that's a massive waste of utility coming out from Empire so far. The fact that Shepard has put down both asphyxiating bolts and they still haven't got this bandit off of the wall. Empire are looking really disorganized right now. Yeah, and with no nades, it does make the job a little bit more difficult um, to try and shift Bandit off that east wall. It's probably going to come down to Joystick now to do something about it. But look, the castle barricade's there. There's a soft wall right in front of him. He's no breaching rounds left to be able to get through and put any sort of pressure on the Bandit that's being able to Bandit trick. I was about to say as well, he could now go into the basement and rotate up Secret instead. And looks like that is exactly what he's going to do. The east wall will actually get opened up now, so really well done by Shockwave to get that open. We didn't quite see what happened there, but Aces will not guess correctly on that bandit trick. And this is looking a little bit better for Empire, but the signs run out of time. We've seen how their time management has been before, and they still make it back. But there we go, Joystick takes down Alpha all the way from Secret. Great early kill coming out from him, and you'll be able to get all the way up here. This is completely exposed now as Scyther takes down Aces. Now a 3v5, Empire looking much, much better as Joystick moves all the way up, and he wins the fight! What? What was that? Joystick takes off Ryzen. Oh my god, it's a 2v5, all down to the Uno Meister and Hicks himself. As smoke starts to come out, and you will lose the fight. And it's all down to Uno in a 1v5 clutch situation. 15 seconds left to go. The defuser will start going down, but he can't win the fight. Karzeka takes him down, and Empire actually take round number 10 flawlessly and put themselves onto match point. What, what are we watching? What just happened? Is Joystick just a god? It certainly looks like it could be. The, the, the heads up play there was incredible. The, the game sense to go down through the basement. He, he was able to come up, pick up two quick kills. It was as soon as the east wall got opened, it was game over. I, I don't know. I don't think so, Brick, because they opened up the east wall, but they're opening it up. I, I said before, I've said this multiple times, about 1 minute 40 is the average time to open on that east wall. They were opening it very, very late. And Lestream had so much plant denial still available to them. They still had so much control. Joystick does rotate with secret. He gets good early kill there. At that point, Empire looking pretty good in a 3v5. But Joystick moving into Garage and getting that pick is what won them the round because now they have so much control and Empire can just push him from pretty much every single angle and shut it down. I think Joystick is just a fragging machine at this point. Need to locate and it's it's certainly what you want out of your Ash. <laughs> you, uh, you definitely want your Ash to be able to pick you, up those kills when it counts. If you're picking counts. an Ash and you're not getting kills, it's kind of a waste. Because yeah. if, especially with how he was using his Ash charges as well because he's not using them on heavy utility. He used one on the logistics hatch, and he used one on one of the windows into server. So even though him opening the server door up is good, because that allows him to get a capital bolt in, I don't know. I don't. I didn't like him opening logistics hatch like that. No, I, I commented on it at the time that it was a little bit of a waste of utility okay. because it would have allowed him to be able to get the CCTV nice. wall open a little bit sooner if he was Five able to either get through the castle or through the soft wall. But ultimately, it didn't really come to anything. And maybe the fact that he's using them very early on, it's just sort of saying, right, this is my utility. I've got it. I'm going to use it in the first 15, 20 seconds of the round. And then that's it. I'm just fragging out. And I'm just going to focus on kills. And you can just drone me in and make sure that I'm able to do that. I don't have to worry about using the utility at you know, any point later on within the round. Just Joystick's ability to consistently win, win gunfights 
is absolutely amazing. It's something we saw from Psycho yesterday on Nip. He was just running in there, consistently winning his gunfights, and he was dropping a huge amount of kills. Kazeka going to take down Rise, however, early kill coming out from Empire here. Already looking insanely good for them. The Jaeger going down, that's not a huge utility pick, but it is a pick nonetheless going through. This is looking really good for Empire so far. But it's going to be all about how they can adapt their attack, but the fact that they've already made good use of the time, considering their lack of progress during previous rounds in the first two minutes, is definitely a telling tale of how much better. But maybe it'll actually go the opposite way. Maybe they're not used to having this much time, and they'll just get to their heads. No, I think that you're, you're seeing a slightly different Empire at the moment. The last two rounds, they really seem to have woken up. Uh, you know, the round previously on CCTV there, like I said, they went flawless. And now just with the speed and the aggression that they're bringing to this round and how much they were able to take early on, how many hatches they were able to get open, it's just going to make them make the job a lot easier. We've seen them use their time very well uh, on the on the bar attack as well. The, you know, they spent quite a lot of that time in the drone, quite a lot of that time figuring out the push. And when the execute came, it was perfect. Uno Meister's got a very big job here. He's going to desperately be trying to find some sort of a C4 kill but there's not all too many players in Empire that are up in the kitchen area that are going to be exposing themselves to him. Shots are going to rain down them from Kar Zeka Scanning. but none are going to connect. You know still desperately trying to find somebody on the cardiac sensor but I've got a feeling that this kitchen hatch is probably going to be opened. Yeah, I think despite Uno's best efforts, it probably is going to get opened up, but he could toss a really good nitro out here, and impact could come down, and that is going to be successful. I'm wondering how Empire are going to react to this stuff, because now there's no x -Pyros. Oh my god, Uno with a beautiful nitro. There goes Kazdeko. I mean, he already did his job, but that has even the scoreboard out to a 4v4, and Thermites are going to go through onto Churchwall, so it doesn't look like Kitchen Hatch is actually going to get opened up just yet. Capital Bolts are going to come down, Shockwave still pressing through into the church wall and preferring this take coming out from Empire just because last time when they when they were in this position they opened up into Arsenal instead so now they have church open they have a lot more options and oh my god Alphama almost gets wall banged and the Nitro comes out that's beautiful but it doesn't connect Hicks takes down Joystick but Shockwave does make his entry now he's in church he doesn't have a diffuser though Shepard does have diffuser control they reload and just hold it down they do have control of church 3v3 but this isn't looking too good for Empire because it's starting to run out of time Pressure will start to come down. The shots start to come through for Shockwave to try and push out Blue. This isn't looking good, but the Fuser will go down during all the chaos. Scyther will take down Aces, and now it's a 2v2 because Shockwave has gone down in all the chaos. Uno providing all this good in active intel coming out from the Pulse and go for the pre-fires where he can, but the Fuser slowly doing its work now. This is not looking too good at all for the stream as Hicks moves up to try and retake the site. He goes for the pre-fires, can't know where anyone is. He doesn't have any intel at all. Uno needs to move up, but what a shot from Hicks! Takes down Shepard. It's all down to Scyther and a shockwave to try and deny this coming through. He'll try and push this out and he'll try and get the diffuser down, but Uno loses the fight. Hicks will take down Shockwave with a double shotgun from Hicks. Does he have enough time? I think he does, just by a fraction of a margin. Oh my God, Hicks. Defenders have disabled. What a diffuse. Bond diffusing attempt failed. Defenders Hicks win. there. Hicks go. That's a great diffuse to be able to pick up, especially on match point for Empire. I really thought that once the diffuser had gone down there, that it was going to be GG's. Empire were going to hold that post plant. But just the angles that they kind of had to leave themselves with, the way that the church wall had been opened and the, and the location of where the plant went down, it made it a little bit more difficult to, for them to be able to watch that. And we're just seeing the shotgun do great work close range yet again. We've seen it so many times. And pretty much during all the Pro League last week as well, we saw the pump shotgun just be the best gun in the game and push it through. But the stream are going to bring it to 5-6. They're one round away from bringing us onto overtime, which if they did, would mean that this has been a complete 50-50 split in terms of attack and defense rounds. Which is something that we weren't really expecting to see. But I think it speaks to how good these teams are at being able to adapt and how good the you know how good they're able to change things up on the fly because Attackers like you say we've we've really not seen clubhouse go this way in the past couple of games that we've watched. Um, it always has tended to be very attacker side. You can see there the kills coming out from Uno Meister is going to be 14 and 8. Scyther, after his flurry of kills earlier on a couple of rounds ago as well, is going to be sat pretty uh, pretty good on 15 and 4. It's very interesting considering how Joystick has been doing really, really well during his attack rounds, but during defense, yeah, Scyther was definitely picking up quite a few. He's 15 for four right now. Definitely some pretty heavy fraggers coming out from both teams. Attackers we'll see how the rest of this does start to work out. We'll see the stream are gonna be defending onto the gym and bedroom. We've seen this from them before. What went wrong here for them? 
this was the round that we saw Joystick deploying his utility um, and in, in, the, in the garage area, trying to take control of the garage, trying to take control through... Well, in fact, they did take good control of garage very early. It was the control of cash that they really, really struggled with. We've not seen the Maestro this time. No, we don't. And it's kind of weird that Lushim are not taking the Maestro here at all. They seem to be relying more on the Valkyrie for info here, but... Yeah, it's, it's definitely very interesting because the Maestro would be so powerful here and I thought with the Zofia ban as well and with the fact that Joystick hasn't really been using his Nash charges that effectively, I thought he was going to go much into the opposite way. Yeah, I, I, I would have very much liked to see the Maestro here, but we're going to see the East Wall be opened nonetheless. It's going to provide shock, nice angle on into the garage just to make sure that we've got no members of the stream playing over in there. There are a couple of Valkyrie cameras in here though, which are going to provide vital information for the team of the stream as, uh, as he just gets up on repel. Maybe looking to push something else. The wall's open now, it's a very good distraction and uh, you can see that Uno Meister just jumping on his Valkyrie cams, just seeing what he can see. But Thatcher there, very good eyesight, spotting that one out right at the back of the server rack and is, uh, is able to deny that utility. But you know, pretty much uh, pretty much half of the round gone at this point. So Joystick's maybe going to want to uh, start opening some of these outside castle barricades just to be able to uh, get himself on into sight a little bit. Yeah, looking pretty good for Team Empire to take control here because they take out the Valkam. Now they have control. Joystick's actually going to open up the castle barricade and he's going to be able to destroy all of that utility. That should be Shockwave, who can now get open the wall. Aces cannot bandit trick that right now. Oh my god, Uno just runs all the way out of garage. He takes down Kazakh with a beautiful headshot. Now it's a 4v5 and all of a sudden looking really bad for Empire. But Shockwave will strike back. The hard breach at entry takes down Aces. It's been amazing how many aggressive kills that Shockwave has got in this game. Shockwave's been doing really good on just, like you say, picking up those very aggressive kills, been working off obviously good information and taking advantage. You can see there he's going to pick up another one on the Fragmite, taking out the Jaeger. A good control now for, he's in the site, so they've got very good control and I'm sure that the plant is going to start coming down. Shepard no doubt going to make his way over into Jim. Joystick getting Uno out on the stairs. Going to have a bit of a skirmish with Rise over near Logistics, but Rise is going to be in a very tough spot now to try and retake this site as I'm sure the Diffuser is going down. Shock's going to pick up another one onto Hicks and Joystick's going to close it out with another round going to Empire and that is going to be the first game, ladies and gentlemen, going to Team Empire. That was just looking so powerful for Empire right there for a long, long, long time. And just look at this final score, but this is going to be absurd. Joystick does actually end up as MVP, but I don't think he dropped the most amount of kills here. Uh, I think Scyther dropped a, a fair amount last time that we did get to see the scoreboard. Um, yeah, Scyther got 15, so Joystick there just picking up uh, a couple more points, I guess. But, uh, you know, you really can't, I can't argue with Ugo, Uno's performance there. 15 to 9, doing his best for his team. Um, what an exciting first map that we...